great. And now I'm pleased to introduce you the presenter for today's webinar. I'm joined by Dr. Rick Lemadu. Rick is part of the CSU Merlot team at California State University Office of the Chancellor. He serves as the Associate Director of the SkillsCommon.org Repository of Open Educational Resources for the Department of Labor of La Department of Labor's TACT grant program. Rick provides ongoing support to the 256 TACT grant projects represented by 700 institutions nationally. He also coordinates and manages the CSU Merlot services with the Department of Labor and is an integral part of the TACT Learning Network. So Rick, if you're ready to get started, I can go ahead and give you the screen. Yes, thanks. I'll be ready to go as soon as you're, you do that. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, uh, hopefully, if, oh, folks, you can all see the, um, the PowerPoint presentation that we're going to um, kind of use as our guide today. Um, I'm really happy to be able to share um, this great resource that is available for free for anyone to use. Um, and you don't have, the great thing is you don't even have to sign up and create a user account to be able to um, reuse any of the materials on the Skills Commons uh, website. So um, here's just a little brief agenda that we'll, we'll uh, look at to cover today um, in our session and just try to um, familiarize you a little bit with skills commons, maybe get a few questions at the end. Um, if you have those, if there's something um, as I'm going through and you have a question, um, please don't hesitate to ask because it may be just as good to go ahead and you know cover that while we're in that topic area. I will do a little screen share of the website itself here in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to provide a little bit of background about um, what is TACT and SkillsCommons.org, and you know how uh, can it support you know career techno and technical adult education. And so um, also we're going to look at what open educational resources are and why they're important, and a lot of people have questions about that and what can you actually do with OER, open educational resources, based on the licensing of those products. Then we'll also look at the Skills Commons, kind of do a little tour of the Showcase Center. We'll look at how about how to download and pull things out of the library as well. And then some uh, helps in the Support Center once you download something to be able to view it um, and be able to reuse it uh, for purposes, for your purposes. And then also um, just quickly, we'll look at the Connect Center, which is kind of our part of the Skills Commons sustainability strategy beyond the TAC program that um, the final grant uh, uh, round will be uploading their uh, grant deliverables in 2018 at the end of 2018. So um, we've got some initiatives built there to be able to connect people, both tax grant projects as well as non-tax project institutions. So um, if there's something that uh, interests you, please, uh, we would love to uh, have you engage with us and um, and begin to interact with the groups as they work on different initiatives um, related to workforce training and higher ed and all those great things. So a lot of neat things are happening in the Connect Center. So I just want to be able to take a little bit of time to just show you those um, very helpful resources that, that you can, can, can make use of. All right. Um, hey, Rick, the tech real program quick. was a Yes, ma'am. Before yep. we get started, would you be able to go into full slideshow view um, for some of our listeners who are uh, on the sorry. app? It appears a little small. Yep. There we go. Should show up here in a second, hopefully. Or maybe I need to um, go to full screen mode on the. Okay, I'm going to show again. Go. Yeah, I think I need to do the full screen. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, let me go. And your F5 button will take the PowerPoint into full screen mode. Yeah, can you uh, do the um, screen share for me again? I'm not sure. sure. I think I need to be given that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. 
and I want to do my screen. Okay. Thanks for bearing with us, everybody. Here we go. Got it? Yep. Good to go. Excellent. Okay, great. So um, so this the tax program uh, was started in 2010 through the through a bill in Congress and it, uh, the first round of projects were awarded um, in 2011 and the final was in 2014. And so all the projects then are uploading in sequential years. So rounds one and two have, have completed their, um, their uploads. And so uh, rounds three and four will be completing in 2017 for round three and round four in 2018. So there's quite a bit of content that's already been added to Skills Commons, uh, but there's still quite a bit to go yet. So um, if there's something in Skills Commons that you haven't found, um, hang on and continue to, to look and um, visit visit often. Uh, and um, we've also got groups that are working on reusing um, material from Skills Commons, and we'll be adding those uh, revised and reused content back into Skills Commons. So um, it's quite a big investment that over 700 colleges across the country were able to receive um, through the, uh, the Department of Labor's TAC grant program, Trade Adjustment Assistance. Community college career training. Um, so uh, the, the, the main goal was to design, and as you read there, innovative and effective programs to address specific industry needs. And the really neat thing about this was that each of the programs that were developed um, worked with an industry partner and local employer to create the curriculum and create the learning outcomes that would help the students um, with the uh, skill sets that the employers were looking for. So Skills Commons is the repository for all of the grant deliverables that the um, TAC grant program is developing. And all of the TAC materials that are developed with grant funding from the Department of Labor through this program needed to be CC BY license, which is a Creative Commons attribution, BY license, meaning that anybody can use this content. Um, and so this has now become a, a large, workforce training program, um, uh, digital online library of open, free and open resources for anyone to use. And so that's where we get into the terminology of what is OER? Well, the, these are open educational resources that are freely accessible and openly licensed documents and media. So you can reuse these in any way you would like. So why are they important? So anyone can reuse them. You can revise, you can retain, you can redistribute, remix them any way you would like to because of the attribution license, uh, the CC BY license that, that is a part of it. And so Skills Commons has created a um, one-stop shop for, uh, for OER, for Open Educational Resources, for you to learn more about, skill, about um, Open Educational Resources, as well as some helpful um, resources that we provided in one one area that um, so you don't have to chase all over the internet looking you know here's a site there's a site um, for example on this next slide um, there's really no need for you to reinvent the wheel with this one-stop shop for OER we have over 50 um, different uh, resources in this one-stop shop for OER um, page in skills commons and one thing I wanted to just make sure that you're aware of uh, and don't panic, is that the um, links to all of the, the screen sharing and the slides with screenshots on them have a URL in the notes feature. So once this um, webinar is over and is posted, the, the PowerPoint presentation along with a link will be um, posted um, in, on Softrack's site and you'll be able to download these slides, the slide deck, which will have the um, uh, the note in the notes section will have the URLs for all of the pages that I'm showing you so you can navigate back to those when you like. All right. So, um, so we invite you to uh, learn more about OER if you don't, um, if you need to uh, learn more about those. I, it's something that um, I'm continuing to, to uh, broaden my perspective on and um, knowledge about in, in the sense of 
what can we actually do with these based on the licensing. And so the great thing with um, the TAC grant deliverables in, in the repository and Skills Commons is they have CC BY license. So um, you can take them and use them. You don't even have to have a, an account. Um, although we would like to know if you're going to reuse it so that we could um, showcase that. And that's what we'll move to next is on the, um, in the Skills Commons uh, website, we have a place for showcases. And we've got different categories based on um, you know, what, what is being showcased. And one of the things we'd like to showcase are reuse areas. And that's this point here, um, which we'll look at in just a minute. But we've also got grant project showcases and grants that have done some really neat things, um, makeover showcases. Uh, the one that we're going to look at first uh, and do a deep dive into a little bit is these open courseware showcases. And these are show courses that you can use right now that are ready to go. So at this point, I'm going to go into um, Skills Commons website here, and I'll click on the showcases. You can actually access it here on the top, or you can click this handy dandy uh, link right here and view showcases. So here we are on the Skills Commons site, and we'll look at the open courseware. And so what we're doing is here is we've cataloged, cat organized and categorized these by the four or five main industries in which skills, uh, the tech grant was funded. And, and the main areas were manufacturing, which got around 50, a little over 50% of the tech funding of that $1.9 billion. The next would have been um, healthcare, got quite a, quite a bit of funding, and then information technology and energy um, and uh, energy industry training, and then um, other, other areas like public administration and food and, and things like that, and some transportation. Um, uh, sectors were, were funded as well. So we've, we've put this courseware here for anyone to be able to use kind of the low hanging fruit, the easy stuff to go ahead and, and get a hold of. And so let's just like look at manufacturing, for example, some open courseware. This was a, a, a grant project, um, a round one project out of Anne Arundel um, Community College. And they worked with the um, online learning uh, OLI with the, um, uh, out of Carnegie Mellon and put together a full uh, course on composite technology certificate program. And you can see all about that here and, and read about it. And we've got links to the subject matter expert review. So if you're looking at, you know, how is the content or the quality of the content? Is that okay or not? Well, we've got SME reviews that are available, which you can download and look at. They've also put in here a, a program guide and teaching toolkit. So if you wanted to reuse this course, you could do that. There's a preview to the online course here um, that takes you to the OLI site. And then this is a, a link on Skills Commons that will take you to where the content is was uploaded, um, these 17 courses in the certificate program. So we click those hyperlinks there, and it gives you information about the, the description, um, downloads you can click on, the date that it was put in, the primary material type, just more metadata cataloging information um, that provides uh, you with the information that you kind of what you would need, like education level, um, is it credential type, could it be credit or non-credit, could be used for, um, all those types of things. And then there's an additional public access to materials um, link here to the OLI site that you can go off off site to, to link to, okay? Um, there's also one in Mechatronics, a technology certificate program in Mechatronics. Again, the same type of information, um, courses that are built uh, belonging to that. And this one was the level one of the Siemens Mechatronic, Mechatronic Systems level one certification. All right, again, um, link to the, to the site where you can go in and look at the course. Um, you can enter the program here and go in and, and have fun and look at that. You can refer your students to it. Again, you can get the um, actual uh, courses, the list of the 13 courses here that are in that program. Um, again, the links uh, are all these in, in blue are hyperlinked. So that takes you right to where the uh, item um, description page is, as well as where you can download files and things like that to take and use how you'd like to use those. All right. How are we doing, Jen, so far? Uh, any questions uh, from, the, from anyone or? Um, pace to go okay for people right um, yeah we have one question are the courses ADA compliant yes they are good I'm glad you brought that up they have to be ADA compliant 
as part of the tax um, requirement, yes, part of the grant deliverable program. Yep. Yes, good question. Wonderful, thank you. Um, look, yeah, look at the developmental education open courseware. This is, um, I, I tell everybody nowadays that uh, I, ever since this tax program, there's no need to create or develop a new uh, developmental math program, for example, or some of these reading and writing basics. There's some really, really good things in um, that the grant projects have created and developed. Uh, for example, like let's we'll look at um, Algebra One, for example, or pre-math, let's look pre-Algebra One. Um, and this is really neat because, again, it has the a description of the material, it has SME reviews, it has a link to the online course and a link to where you can download the materials in this course. So for example, let's go to the preview of the online course. And this course was made with Soft Chalk, and so with um, Soft Chalk Cloud, so you can see here, you get a good example and a good description of what the course is. You can kind of go in and look around, um, play around in here a little bit, and just kind of look at how the course is set up. Look at the section one and the introduction to um, ordinate or uh, relation of whole, whole numbers. Um, and you'll see here different uh, interactive pieces here to um, inter, you know to to uh, see what the content's about. There's also a an open textbook that folks that you can use as part of this um, course as well, and a link to that, and just hyperlink that, it's, just click that. But then again, you can kind of just see um, what this course actually looks like. Again, you could refer your students to this course um, and, and use it that way, or you could actually, if we went back to um, here, to the, uh, where the makeover is on the, uh, I mean the showcase is, uh, in the developmental education area up here. So we, we're looking at developmental education open courseware and the pre-algebra one, and you can go to um, where you can download that actual um, course uh, cartridge that was exported using, um, using the IMS common cartridge uh, format so that if you're in you're not using soft chalk, but maybe you're using Canvas or D2L or Blackboard or something like that, or vice versa. You're using soft chalk cloud in the in the or soft chalk in the course content was created in Blackboard. Folks can export with an IMS common cartridge um, export feature. That way, it can be put into another learning management system. So this is where you could come and download that course, okay, and and then take it and use it for how you want to. Again. Um, uh, additional public access to the materials and the, we've created a Moodle instance where we put all these modules together that are part of this math course so you can see that otherwise if you just want the individual courses again you can find those there through the um, links and and create and, and download those and take those that way okay any yeah. questions or comments about yeah yeah we have a couple of questions for you um, you mentioned the yep. you mentioned the course review. What criteria was used on reviews? So, uh, as part of the TAC grant um, requirement, again, they had to pick people within their um, industry um, that 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 taught, like for example, developmental math, or whether it's machining or welding curriculum. So it had to be somebody that was familiar that that that, that has taught welding. Um, or a welding professional that could review the course and um, and provide the subject matter expert review um, for that. So um, and and those are included in um, the the repository here. So for example, the algebra one. Here's the final review, final overview. So you can you can have those and and again anybody can download. As you see, I'm not logged in. Um, I'm just browsing and viewing, and I could download this. I can open it up and then see here, you can look at the overview of the course um, and the learning objectives and the um, review that was conducted by this, okay? Great, we have another question from just Art. Kind of scroll through it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, are courses certified by Quality Matters? Some are, and yes, some, some are and um, it, it, it all just depends on how they're cataloged. And so we provide that opportunity for folks if they want to um, indicate that. And I'm not sure if we had that for round one on the quality. Yeah, here's an SME report 
Um, some had used an other rubric, um, but in, in the Skills Commons Support Center, we actually have um, a, a place where we refer grant projects that they could use uh, Quality Matters, for example, Cole, um, Online Learning Consortium's rubric, um, and, and others to, um, to check the quality of the online course itself, the delivery uh, platform. So um, some of those ha have that in their um, metadata. So um, that, that's definitely something you can look for if that's a critical piece for you, if, if you want to find, like for example, Quality Matters uh, reviewed courses, for sure. In regards to sorting, Suzanne asked, is there a way to sort for those courses that have textbooks as opposed to just syllabi? Okay, great, great question. These are good questions. So um, I'm gonna go back to the home page here. And if you wanna browse, so I think we'll kind of, um, can, can I just hold that? question for a second because I got a few more things I'd like to share in this area on the showcases before we transition to that because that's something that we're actually going to look at sure. specifically in the presentation just a second okay great okay so um, if we go back to the showcases so um, the the next thing that we'd like to I'd like to share with you are like the reuse showcases for example um, we've got a, this basic computer skills course that was created by a, a project in um, in w Wisconsin, and they actually hosted on their their uh, online repository for their state um, institutions called WISC Online. And this uh, is a really neat uh, example of reuse. This is also in the IT area for um, Open Courseware showcases. I didn't get show you that one um, that 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 particular um, sector but um, that this course is there as well um, but you can use this course as is for example um, to help students get up to speed if they're lacking for example you know basic computer skills things like that uh, um, I referred this to a grant project in Ohio which is a little bit of this right up here on the on this page about this how this is being reused and so they're using it to assist people looking for employment um, uh, it, it, uh, I mean, for, for new students that lack computer skills, um, what happened was this grant project director works at an institution called Northwest State Community College in Ohio near Toledo and was visiting with their um, workforce investment board person. And they um, were interested because they need to have for trade adjustment assistance folks that are, you know, maybe in their late 40s, 50s mid 50s that don't really have a lot of computer skills. For example, one of the uh, th things that came up was the, the Ohio Workforce Investment Board told the person um, to, in order to use our database and things like that, we, we would like to have you create, you know, send your, um, you know, to sign in to um, have your uh, user account and an email associated with your user account. And the person said, well, where do I go to get a use, uh, an email account? Do I have to go to the post office? And so, um, you know, people are at all different levels, right? So uh, the Ohio Workforce Investment Board said this would be something that would be great that they could use at their training centers to help people that need a little bit of, um, you know, remedial work and so um, with computing. And so this course has been reused and used over and over again in multiple different um, settings. And in fact, even in offline a version is available. For example, if I um, go to the, um, a basic computer skills course here there's a um, a course configured for use in locations with no internet internet access um, because of some of the prison systems around the country have um, requested to use it uh, it's being used in Wisconsin in their penal system um, Georgia has also requested it as well as Kansas and West Virginia to use offline and so um, so there's an offline version available as well um, so again the the description to the this this material is here and the link to their um, WISC online repository we can actually go in and see the course you know you can see basic basic things here to get started um, as simple as using the mouse and all that so I'm going to continue as a guest um, you can create an account and log in but you can see that if you'd like to resume where you left off no I'll start over and so you can see it's interactive and all that good stuff okay um, so uh, that's a, those are some reuse, reusing a 
as is, just giving you some examples or some other things here as well that you can look at later. Um, and then the other area that I'd like to showcase is the makeovers. And so what's a makeover? You know, you heard of a uh, makeover home edition, you know, on TV and uh, people are, you know, leave their house for a few days and this big crew comes in and does a bunch of uh, remodeling and things like that. So when we look at what is we think, what are we thinking on skills commons of a makeover is transforming the material and content um, into a diff, onto a more interactive uh, learning experience for 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 students and um, for people to to learn it. And so we've got examples of content makeovers you see here, and then packaging and delivery makeovers. And so there's several examples here um, as you go down on the um, page, and you can kind of see as you scroll down. Uh, different opportunities and options of how material can be made over and reused. And to just illustrate that, I would like to show you a quick uh, video, um, just a two-minute blurb of how some material was uh, reused in Skills Commons um, and put into a learning platform, uh, management platform. And so before I do that, Jen, are, are we good on time or questions? Anybody have questions? We're good. Um, We're good on good time. time. Before I show that. Yeah, we had a couple. We just have a couple of questions. If you want to take them now. Um, do any of sure. the Do any of the courses contain links to eBooks? Some do. Uh, some of them do. We don't have a lot currently, um, but. Uh, but um, that is something that we are working on with a, a vendor to um, create a bookshelf of course of program, you know, like of, of a course actually, to put that into an ebook format. Um, but but um, there are a few um, e textbooks in the um, in the repository, but currently there's not a not a lot. Okay. Um, so we're limited there. Yep. Someone also asked, what is the ownership of your courses? Like, how do you give credits to the course designers or the owners of the courses? So that will be in the attribution. Uh, um, uh, actually, in the um, when they upload, like the course author, that when they fill in the metadata for submitting a material, when they're cataloging it um, and uploading it to Skills Commons, they can put the, the author's name in there. And they can also um, add that in the CC BY license, um, the attribution. And um, so when somebody reuses that material, it will be attributed back to the original author. And I'll show you that in just a second when we go into looking at um, browsing through the material types and looking at different um, how to download and, and that sort of thing. Wonderful. That's yep. it. That's it for right now. And so how to reuse it. Yeah. So before you start your video, just make sure that um, your volume is turned up, Rick, so everybody can hear it. Yeah. Well, I'm actually not going to. I'll, I'm just going to kind of talk you through it. Okay. Uh, I found this would be a, a little bit better. I do have a one that has music with it. I put that up on YouTube, and it's also on our website as well, the one with the music. But this one, I think, would be a little bit um, more effective if I kind of chat my way through it and kind of let you see the process that happens as it goes on. So here's an example of um, reuse in Skills Commons. So, and we picked the uh, manufacturing area. There we go. For a, a reuse for a makeover example. I'm sorry about this is the old um, cover page, front page to Skills Commons, but here's how you go in and, and browse for material in Skills Commons. And so we went in and we found this direct current lab electricity course. And so we select the file to download it. Um, and when we found was, it was a bunch of Word documents. <laughs> no internet activity on them. Um, but this was fine, kind of simple. It had the CC BY license on it. You see some tables and things like that, and some charts and graphs, uh, images and things like this. And um, just simple Word documents and some websites with URL links and some multimedia links as well to YouTube which is all fine and good, but here's what a reuse, kind of transforming those Word documents and making it over. And we used the SoftDrop Cloud, um, uh, SoftDrop uh, LMS, and imported this content into uh, the, the LMS to make it more interactive. So you see, you, got, you can listen to the page with Speak Reader, you can, uh, read Speak, and then you've got a table of contents here. Here's an example of how the material is rebranded. Again, it's CC BY license. But down here, um, the attribution license is provided. Um, in the original authors, and then going in and looking at the content itself. So you can 
with the soft chalk interface, you can roll over the images now and make those more interactive and get the uh, definition and kind of a little bit more description. Again, embedding the videos versus the links to be able to see what those resources are, um, you know, in, in real time versus going out and just, you know, linking to uh, a hyperlink with um, where here it's embedded right in the course. So an interactive practice drill there, created that in there. Um, and so we provide additional resources um, in the support center, which we'll show you um, in just a second here when we go back to the um, screen share about reusing and revising open educational resources and some helps that are available there. Okay. All right. So at this point, we're going to um, – well, one last slide in the showcase area is the um, grant project outcomes showcases. And these are really neat because these kind of tell – some stories of the impact of of the um, pro, of, of the tax program um, based on different uh, grant projects and interacting with different um, students, both students. You get some from the student quotes from them, as well as from industry partners that they worked with, and, and those types of things. We put together some some information, general information about the project itself. Um, employment records and things like that, participants, earning credentials, you know, kind of the metrics. And then some a neat story here of kind of how the uh, tech program impacted this person in Tennessee um, through getting the training. So those are available too. Uh, just wanted to, before we left the showcase area, um, if it's something you're interested to see kind of how tech grant program has really impacted these local communities and students as well. Okay, so at this point, we'll go look at the browse, go to the browse feature, and um, actually, let's look at the home page, because you can always go here and type in by keyword. So, for example, if you're looking for cybersecurity courses, you just type that in, you know, and it'll um, pull those up. If my, here we go. And, and so I can click here just by a keyword search, and it'll find everything in Skills Commons 546. We actually had some grant projects that were named cybersecurity or had cyber in their name. And so you can, you can uh, do it that way. Um, you can um, look by credential type if you want to or the material type. So, um, so that's an option as well. Another neat uh, way that people like is uh, some folks do is this interactive uh, wheel. Um, and so it's, uh, this is aligned to the North American Industrial Codes. Um, and so uh, this contains, you know, a, a large number. Um, for example, the information technology course, uh, technology uh, area has over 698 uh, materials in, in this um, NAICS code area. In the um, professional, scientific, and technical services, there's over 1,000. In the healthcare, there's 1,343 materials. In manufacturing, 1,352 materials. That's the, the one here in parentheses. And so if we refine that and we go down, so we look at miscellaneous manufacturing area, there's 427. We go around to fabricated metal product manufacturing. We see that there's 320. And so if we click that and we continue to refine it in this uh, NAICS code and it pulls up, here's 147 of those materials. And so a great way to refine your search um, is to, do, to use that, use the wheel, or you can go, um, into the industry area, and this is kind of the ADA compliant side um, because the wheel isn't in ADA compliant. So you see here that in total manufacturing, there's 1,402 materials, and you can refine in this area as well um, in this gray box over here. So if you're looking for something in fabricated metal, you can see there's 147 there. In machinery manufacturing, there's 111. Um, and so in manufacturing, transportation equipment, aerospace, there's 84 materials. Let's just click that one just for kicks. And so we've got 84 here where we, you know, we've, we've honed our search down. And then by material type, this is what the question was earlier. Can I refine a search if I'm looking just for open textbooks? And so here's all the material types over here um, that we've got listed. And then you can also uh, come over here and look at other uh, results that didn't show up in that list. So we know that in um, in this area, under these, uh, under this uh, NAICS code, 
there aren't any open textbooks, okay? But there are some reference materials or some recruitment and outreach. There's an assessment tool, some workshop and training materials. And then you can also uh, sort by um, credential type. Again, in parentheses, there's 63 stacked and lattice credential models. There's 16 that were done in, um, in, the, uh, in the certificate area. And so you see that. And then if you're looking for a particular institution, for example, you can find that. So we'll go back here. We'll click this off. We'll get our big list up, and um, so we'll we'll look at um, let's look at manufacturing and fabricated metal. So we see there's some hybrid blended courses. We click those, we get there's 60 results, and so Front and Range Community College has a course cartridge that they've ex that they put in here. Um, I believe this is a Blackboard course cartridge, but it's IMS. So you can download that and put that into your management system. And if you ever have any issues with any of this, downloading or anything like that, please send me an email and I will help you. Um, and I can track down how we can get a solution for you if you're having any issues um, with the material itself and downloading or reusing it. And so one of the, the, the um, other areas that we have for you to, to find material is if you're just looking by material type, and so these are all alphabetical order. So you can see here that the open textbooks, if you're looking for just those, this hasn't been indexed in a, in a few days. We've had a few more added. There's a total of seven. Um, but you can click here and, for example, the anatomy and uh, physiology textbook, there's reviews um, by the uh, SME reviews are included, along with the textbook itself that you can download and reuse um, or refer your students to if you want to reuse it. And then there's additional public access, and then the derivative from OpenStax textbooks that this grant project um, used. Okay, so again, um, material type, and then you can go through in whatever sort of area you're looking for content. If you're just looking for open textbooks, you can do that. Or if you're looking for online courses, there's a total of 613 online courses in Skills Commons. So you can hit that one, and again, looks like it hasn't been re-indexed. Number 615. Um, but you can you can see that those there, um, and again, uh, revising uh, based on industry sector, you could do that over here. So there's 150 in information technology that you could look at if you're looking for IT courses, for example. Okay, and again, the link is to uh, the, that information and where you can actually download the documents, a storyline uh, file, as well as a SCORM. A package that you can reuse um, and take and, and do and again the metadata the information about this material um, and just one other thing up here is the name of the grant project and this was a round one grant project um, over several states I think uh, maybe five or six different states across that uh, these folks worked on together um, one thing I wanted to draw your attention to if you have questions about downloading the content itself we've got a um, a whole FAQ section here in the um, support center, and, and you can come here. So, like, for example, I download an IMS common cartridge, IMS.IMSCC uh, file at the end. I'm, I can't view it. Here's, here's an answer on how to do that. And so we've got helps for you to, um, to, uh, to unpack and look at um, some of the materials that are in Skills Commons um, that don't have a preview feature. We're working on that currently. To provide more so if there's something in particular that you're interested in um, that doesn't have a preview of it um, please let us know because we have a, a that Moodle instance where we showed you the um, the soft chalk cloud courses were uploaded to we could put those in there as a course in there as well or um, a cartridge in there and let you be able to see it so um, again it's a kind of a gift registry so you let us know what you need and then we can um, we can meet that need so that's kind of my my job is to help folks to reuse the content in Skills Commons. So I'm affectionately called 1-800-RICK LUMADU uh, with all the tech grantees. And so um, if you need help with anything, just 1-800-RICK LUMADU. Uh, my email address will be provided at the end of the presentation. And um, so again, just uh, if you got, need any help about reusing content out of Skills Commons, uh, just don't hesitate to ask. And so again, we're committed to be here after the tax funding ends and would love for you to be able to reuse and take any of the content out of Skills Commons um, 
that would be helpful for you um, to use and that you would make use of. So I'm going to go back to the presentation here. So I can read it out. There we go. And get up to. Uh, and while I'm doing that, um, are there any questions at this point uh, before we go on to the last part of the presentation? Sure. Um, someone had Anybody asked has? if they if they started an, a private online tutoring service, can they download the courses and use that to tutor students? Yep. Yep. Yes, you can. That's why it's that's the CC BY piece of it, and um, I know that's a little bit hard for some folks to to take, but um, uh, that is what a CC BY license means. So it can actually be sold. Um, uh, people can take it and create ebooks um, and sell it. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. And it's part of the Department of Labor um, strategy for the best reuse, uh, return on investment of this funding. So, um, yes, you may. You can use it for private tutoring. Yep. Okay. Good question. Uh, Anything else? Yes. Um, is it possible to share material and post it on Skills Commons? If so, what's the procedure to do so? So, great question, and that's something we're working on currently with the Department of Labor to allow us to, to pilot some of that. Because currently, um, the Skills Commons repository is uh, part of our um, statement of work is that it uh, we're a cooperative um, uh, grant or recipient. Not as not like a grant recipient, but we're in a cooperative um, agreement with the Department of Labor, and so the SO, the current SOW states statement of work states that this is just for TAC grant deliverables. Um, but uh, the Department of Labor is seeing that people that are reusing things out of Skills Commons or have other things that are particularly useful for um, these industry sectors would be a great place to upload these. So so if you have something particular. Please let me know because um, we we are working on that and we'll, we'll, we're finding a way to do that. And so um, please let me know if that's something that you would like to do because um, that helps kind of push that argument a little bit further to um, expand um, who can upload to Skills Commons. So, um, but that is something that's coming. And once the I will say this: once the grant funding ends and the program is over in 2018. Um, January 1st of 2019, then we can, you know, that, that SLW is no longer in effect for us in the sense that um, if we want to allow other folks to upload at that point, that, that can happen without a, without any hitch. So, because um, our, our goal is to see material being reused by people within TAC funding, but also without, outside of TAC, non-TAC uh, entities reusing it. Even HR at, uh, you know, HR employment you know, in um, training and, and things like that for employers, for businesses and things like that. Um, and in fact, some of that is ha currently happening. Um, and that's just a huge market that could really benefit from this, from the materials that are in Skills Commons. Okay. Good questions. Anything yeah. else? Yeah, just a couple more. Um, two questions kind of uh, piggybacking on each other. Can the OER incorporate into an LMS as an LTI tool? Um, slash, will these courses work for Canvas, Blackboard? Um, can you put them in your yes. LMSs? Yes. Perfect. Um, and then one other person, just a quick um, support question. When attempting to create a new user account, one of the required fields is to provide the grant name. If they don't have a grant name, are they out of luck? Yeah, that kind of goes with the, the previous discussion there. Please contact me and let me know what you would like to do, um, and I can we can maybe find another solution for you. Um, if not, even maybe provide an opportunity for you to pilot um, an upload uh, as a non-tech grant. So please contact me. Um, my email will be at the end of the um, presentation. Is that helpful? Yes, it is. Thank you. That's it for now. Okay, good. Okay, great. So uh, again, uh, just. The support center initially, this was created and designed for um, TAC grants to help them, you know, projects to upload material to Skills Commons and kind of their basic questions and things like that. Um, we got the whole section again on, you know, the CC BY license, accessibility requirements, um, how to find materials, how to reuse. Uh, again, you can use any of this material in here. Anyone can. So if that's helpful um, for you, uh, 
make sure um, you, 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 you make use of that. Um, on the Creative Commons licensing requirement, um, again, the purpose of this is to um, ensure that materials developed with funds um, program um, by these grants result and that can be freely reused by others. So um, CC BY license is really great to have on these. And so we've got the reuse and revise area in Skills Commons, um, some uh, user guides and things like that, and about how to use, um, how to apply an attribution license. For example, there's an, a free attribution uh, builder that you can use, and we've got a link to it right here. Um, and here's what it looks like. And so you can actually just type in the content item. You can choose the license that you want to use, and it'll actually generate it for you down here in this window. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and it'll um, it'll create an attribution license that you can just copy and paste and put in your um, on your documents or in your PDF or your learning management system or whatever. Uh, but this is a free um, a free service for you to use that was developed by um, the Washington, Open Washington um, group that worked um, with Creative Commons um, funded by the Gates Foundation for the early rounds of the grant, of the TAC grant pro project. So I just want to draw your attention. That's available too. Again, you'll have links to all this, um, you know, in the, the notes section. Um, here's just what the accessibility requirements and guidelines for the, skill, for the folks uploading to te their tag deliverables. Um, again, the quality and online hybrid courses, um, rubrics and things like that that are, are available. But keep, sorry, I'm going too fast there. Bump that. Um, but it, so those are available and you can look for those if those are important to you um, for the types of courses that you might want to consider reusing. Okay. Um, the Connect Center, we've, we've um, been working on this for about the last um, eight to ten months on connecting, creating communities where folks can connect in Skills Commons. And um, one of the areas that has been um, really helpful in getting folks connected, and we kind of launched these at our um, TAC at Innovate conference, um, the OLC um, Online Learning Consortium Merlot Annual Conference um, just recently was in um, New Orleans. The first one was last year that we that, that TAC per, uh, participated in. We had a whole track um, for TAC and community colleges to come together and to begin to um, to blow that up a little bit. Ah, it's too small. Um, but anyway, so a couple of communities that started out of that was a storytelling community of how to tell stories um, and for folks to be able to um, share the impact of their programs on students and on their institutions and employers and engagement and things like that. And another um, one was the industry expert to teaching expert network. So bringing people out of industry, for example, they've never taught, they've uh, been in welding or they've been in a manufacturing setting, you know, in, um, but they've never, you know, in healthcare or something like that, um, but they've never taught in a classroom. So this was, uh, course is almost ready to be launched. We're gonna be piloting it about 10 institutions. Um, and it's a free, open educational resource that anybody can use. And at, at whatever level um, you're seeing people come out of the industry um, that need some training on classroom management, for example, or teaching online, all those types of things. So it's kind of um, uh, cataloged and organized in, in the, those formats. So um, uh, that'll be available very soon. Um, but the storytelling community, again, uh, being able to um, interact with a, with a group of people, and you can see the leveraging the Merlot Voices uh, piece to um, integrate uh, more interactivity for folks to be able to share content and have live discussions and things like that. So um, this is, again, free. Anybody can uh, join this if you if it's something that you would like to learn how to tell a story and impact in, um, of your programs and your materials. This has been a really neat, um, exciting um, feature that we've been able to provide a service um, to the community at large, not just TAC uh, grantees, although they're uh, a lot of the um, you know, uh, participants, but um, non-TAC as well. Um, some really neat uh, interactive things have been developed, including an interactive rubric um, for, for how to tell your story and, and some great help. And so they, this group meets bi-weekly um, and, um, and uses Zoom. And so you can, uh, if, you're, if you're looking to join that, that's uh, again on the website. 
um, in the impact community section. Um, we'd also, if you're going to be at any conferences, um, we have a, a conference uh, section as well on Skills Commons. And let me just go and show you that real quick. Um, in the Connect Center on the uh, site, um, you can uh, see where we'll be at. We'll be at NCWE coming in the fall, and then next year again at the WDI. We just, as I said, had our um, recent OLC Innovate Tactic Innovate Conference. We're at the National Association for Workforce Boards in DC in March, League for Innovation. So we'd like to see you at any of these conference, conferences and be able to interact with you and, and provide any services we can. Um, again, the impact communities, the link is there and they'll be in the slide deck as well for you to be able to, to, um, to find information. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the main screen and hit the, uh, PowerPoint. And so here again, there's my email address and the support at skillscommons.org. Uh, email address comes directly to me, or you can use the rlumadu at calstate.edu will also come to me. So if you have any questions or need more information, please don't hesitate to ask. That's why I'm here. 1-800-RICK-LUMADU. Uh, so uh, anything you guys can, can use or if I can be of help in any way, let me know. So I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. And see if there's any other questions. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the questions panel now and we'll answer them. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take the screen back from you. All righty, guys. For more information about our presenter, you can email him at the address listed. I have it also up on the website. And uh, for information about SoftChalk, you can visit our website, softchalk.com, or you can email us at learnmore at softchalk.com. If you think you have a great idea for an innovator session, email me at innovators at softchalk.com. Rick, thanks so much for presenting this webinar for us today. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining. I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Bye.